What up, players? It's Wolboss Tampa in this mod. Today we're gonna finish our Talarn Desert Raider. So the colors that I used in no particular order are, let's go through the metallics first, Mithril Silver. You could use Rune Fang Steel if you have that, definitely. Rune Lord Brass. Um, did we use any other metallics? I think it was Rune Lord Brass. Yeah, I'm gonna say that was it. Uh, Lead Belcher. Use that lead belcher. Let's do the glare. We also use dryad bark, castellan green, rackhart flesh, girly man blue, uh, raiklin flesh shade. Like I said, no particular order. Steel legion drab, zandri dust. Agrax Earthshade, White Scar. Um, okay, what else did we use? It's all over here on this side. Sotek Green. This is for the um, for the plasma. Temple Guard Blue. And we also use Pallid Witch Flesh. That's right near the beginning. You're gonna need that. Mornfang Brown. And Screaming Skull. Now, we shaded the skin even more, but we didn't highlight the skin. And uh, one little note I want to make is that if you feel like you want your skin to be a little bit lighter, then all I would do is go back to, after letting your second wash dry, I would use a little bit of a highlight on the skin with Cadian Flesh Tone mixed in with some Screaming Skull. Other than that, that's all I use. We also use glue, uh, um, some, some glue and some hobby arid static grass from Gale Force 9. There we go for the base. So um, let me know if you have any questions, comments, please leave them below. Thanks for watching and uh, this first tutorial I've done in a long time so sorry if the model goes out of frame a little bit but this is how I would paint a Talarn Desert Raider for the Imperial Guard and the Warhammer 40k game system. Thanks for watching. Latest players! All right, moving on for anyone who's interested, but mainly for my buddies over at the Warhammer Fat Kids channel, we are going to finish our Talarn Desert Raider. So I've done a little test run of the color that we're going to use to highlight the head scarf, head wrap, and I really like it. The colors you're going to need are Rackheart Flesh and Pallid Witch Flesh. Oh, I sound like Harvey Feierstein. So you're going to mix these in your wet palette, which I've got here, and you just want like a one-to-one -one mix, so 50%, 50% of each color. And you're going to get a very creamy sort of color to work with. You want to make sure you don't have too much on the tip of your brush, but you do want a nice fine-tipped brush because we're going to be working on the uh, head scarf and Remember the last thing that we did with it, for those of you who are following along with your own Talarn, is that we shaded it. So it's going to have this very dark brown, this dirty brown, dirty brown kind of look to it. <clears throat> and my brush is getting kind of funky, sorry about that. So, yeah, we want to make sure that you I light up all these little areas that have been sculpted to look like the, you know, the head wrap part. I think these are the strengths of the Talarn models in the sculpt. Overall, you look at the Talarn model and from you know a table's distance away you might think like I don't get it what's so what's so cool about them what's the big deal about them they're very static posed and they're not very dynamic they look very flat like two-dimensional when you stand them up and look at them from the side and while that is true the cool thing is that these scarves are so well made these head wraps are so well made that um, that you can see every fold and you can really highlight to your heart's content. 
you aren't going to do too much. Uh, but yeah, like I said, you can really do as much or as little as you want. You still want to keep the shade in the folds as much as possible. But, yeah, overall, this is kind of the right direction you want to be going in. And you know what, don't worry if you get some of this paint into the into the creases or the shadows. It's really easy to just <clears throat> continue painting a little bit around it and then you kind of cover up any mistakes that you make really, really simply just by painting around it. Then if you want to recreate the shadow, just go back over with Agrax Earthshade later. Okay, now we're gonna do a full on straight palette witch flesh. So I wanna put it on your wet palette though so you can thin it down a little bit. The thing I noticed about this palette witch flesh is that it's a little bit, uh, it, it tends to dry very quickly. So wet palette, uh, paint, slow uh, retarder, something that will slow down the the drying time of your paint really help with this color in particular. You see that it's almost a creamy off-white. It's brighter than the Rackart flesh, but it's not like a oath one gray. It's not like a blue white. It's a brown, warm, warm toned uh, brown white. Warbush tea! Oh, hello, Lewis. I would have some words with you. Uh oh. Sure, Lewis, what's up? What's all this I hear about you going to Waikiki and leaving me behind? Uh, well, Lewis, as everyone knows, you are the dirtiest of old men and you uh, would probably not behave very nicely if we went out and if I took you out to Waikiki. But that's not fair! Oh, the pretty chickadees are at the Waikiki beach! I saw the video! How could you? Get off my lawn! Hmm. All right, so it looks pretty stark, but when you when you pull it away just a little bit, it works. And if you want, if you think like, oh, I, I just it looks too bright, I'm I'm not really feeling it. All you have to do is go back in. I'll show you with your Agrax Earth Shade as soon as I can find it here and thin this down with some water because the first time we used it straight I believe I'm gonna cut it with some water on your wet palette like 50% water 50% shade and then all you're gonna do is paint that sucker back onto the head wrap and then you receive and then doing that you get very natural shading but you still see the uh, highlights the highlight still appears as a highlight color which is kind of what you want 
and you just keep doing this to your heart's content. If you want it brighter, then add more highlights, add less water into the shade, or add, add um, more water into uh, to the shade water ratio, and then you get kind of like a, a better balance. But we'll leave that there, and we'll continue moving on. Xandri Dust is going to be our highlight for the armor pieces. <clears throat> And I don't believe we shaded these armor pieces, so this is actually just like a second co color, a second layer of color that's going to kind of lock in this color if the first layer that you did was too uh, thin. Okay, so that's that, really simple. Now for the knife, the knife was giving us some trouble last time because I couldn't decide what I wanted it to be. but. We're going to highlight up with Morn Fang Brown the leather straps right here on the back. And then see if you can find this color Rune Lord Brass. I really like it. It's not as bright gold as. Um, as Gehenna's gold or the uh, Auric Armor gold and at the same time it is not as brassy and red as Balthazar gold. It's this nice very neutral brownish bronze color and that I think is perfect for the Talarn which have very you know sandblasted dulled equipment. <clears throat> now we're going to take Morn Fang Brown and we're going to mix in a little bit of our primary highlight color which is Screaming Skull which is like a step down from Pallid Witch Flesh. We use Pallid Witch Flesh for the head scarf because it is pretty um, it's bright and it will pick up the eye more but Screaming Skull is going to be for most of our other highlights on this model. So after a one-to-one -one mix of Mornfang Brown and Screaming Skull, we highlight the little bands here. This is what's going to really set your model apart from the other ones on the table, this progressive highlighting. You see how we did that there? Gonna let that relax for a while while we Highlight the uniform with Steel Legion Drab. So you might notice that all these colors are kind of the same, or they're, they're in the same drab kind of color scheme, and that's kind of what we want. I've seen some Talarn Desert Raiders like on Games Workshop's website, on uh, various painting forums where their uniforms are just bright and kind of gaudy with like green splashes on it and uh, I don't really care for those. If you look at the Forge World website they kind of make them look really the way that I think they should look which is wearing very earthy tones. I think somebody, a couple people actually on my channel also suggested looking at the Taliban figures for the bolt action miniature range, which is like 28 millimeters, so they could be used as kind of stand-ins for these guys. And um, I think that would be cool too. If you look at their paint range, or their paint schemes for those, those are kind of very similar to what we're going for with these, these guys. Now remember, I'm using this plasma gunner here, but you might have a regular guy with a las gun. You do same basic principles. Apply. You want to apply the highlight to the flat areas. Leave the shade in the recesses. And kind of pay special attention to all the uh, raised areas. raised areas and all the flat areas too.
So here we go. we've got this sleeve here. Moving the paint along right here on the sleeve. Interesting thing about these guys, they, they don't have any ornamentation. They're not into, you know, the decor decorative look of the Imperial Guard that like the medals and the, the ribbons and the sashes and stuff. They're very <clears throat> they're very practical. Alright, next going back to the pants with Castellan Green. Now for this, what we're going to try to do is highlight the front and the center. And leave the Agrax Earth Shade as much as possible in the folds. There we go. All right, for the skin tone, what we're going to do is, uh, we're gonna add one more layer of Raglan Flesh Shade. To any exposed skin. And what this is gonna do is give us a very sun-tanned, uh, arid, sun-blasted look because we have just previously done uh, another layer, a first layer, so the second layer is going to dull it down even more. This is kind of what I did with my Katachin uh, Jungle Fighters as well, so if you're painting those, then um, this is kind of the same thing we're going for. A dark red, uh, still kind of Caucasian or maybe Middle Eastern, but um, a definitely sun-beaten look. Okay, let's go and work on the gun now. The gun, the gun, the gun is going to be painted Where's all my silvers? Here we go. Lead Belcher. We're gonna mix it with Mithril Silver or Rune Fang Steel. If you have the middle color, which I believe is Iron Guts, some other orc name, or ogre name, I'm sorry, but it's a little bit step higher than Lead Belcher, it's just not as bright as Rune Fang Steel. So that's why I'm adding Mytho Silver to it, we don't want it super bright, but what we are going to do is highlight the flat areas of our weapons. I'm going to do a simple plasma effect now. If uh, you are not using a plasma weapon, then you can just skip ahead and work on the gun, uh, your last gun of choice. Oops, sorry, my phone ringing. And if you have like a, a wooden stock to your to your gun, or um, then you could just use any number of browns. You could use like Mornfang brown, uh, anything like that. Speaking of Mornfang Brown, we're going to add a little bit of Mornfang Brown and Rackhart Flesh together. And that is going to be used to paint up the straps. I'm not, I'm sorry, not Rackhart Flesh. Uh, but, 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 but Screaming Skull, our highlight color. So one to one mix, just like before, we're just going to add a hint of it onto the sides of the straps here on the front of our guy.
give that impression of stretched leather. You see. Oh, hello, Castellan Green onto the canteen. I get so ambitious, I want to keep moving forward. Okay, uh, yeah, where was I? Plasma. So I'm going to use a blue. So I'm going to start with Sotek Green. I'm at home all by myself, which is why the lady boss is like text messaging me. I'll go answer her right after I'm done with this. Don't tell her. Shh. What, honey? I don't know what you're talking about. I was in the bathroom. Okay, now on the sides. on the corners rather and along the tops we are going to paint temple guard blue we're just gonna flick these on the corners to give the impressions of the coils heating up Last thing is we're gonna paint some white scar along the top. And this is to indicate of course the white hot plasma effects. So if you're like yeah, like I said, if you're not doing if you're doing a LAS gun trooper, you, if you don't have any plasma uh, guys, then don't worry about this section. Oops, if you have a good light source, then you can see. There you go. Now, if you have, if you're lucky enough to have girly man blue, it's the last thing you're going to add onto the plasma coils <clears throat> to uh, tie the blue and the whites together. And with one, one swipe, instant plasma. The last part of, part of the video that we're gonna do is some battle damage onto the, um, onto the armor pieces. So in order to do this, you're going to need, where's your mark on Here we go. Dryad Bark, and all you're going to do is splotch it in various areas where you want the battle damage to be. I'm going to go on the sides because I find that the armor gets scuffed on the sides a lot. And we're going to do a couple of slashes down the middle. Kind of like my towel. If you, any of you have seen my battle scarred towel tutorials, this is kind of the same way that I'm doing those guys. You know, they fight in the elements. It's dark. It's dirty. Yeah, it's, it's rough. <laughs> um, hello. There's a skull on his knife, so we're gonna use Rackarth Flesh. These guys aren't as festooned with skulls like the uh, Empire Boys are for the state troops, but they do have them. 
You know who doesn't have much real skulls on them at all? I don't think. The Cadians. They have like skull motifs like on their helmets and stuff, but yeah, these guys are hardcore. They actually have skulls on their knives. Okay, now that that's dry, we're also gonna take my throw silver and paint that onto inside of the brown splotches. So this is to show where the metal underneath has worn through. And this is your battle damage. I do this on my, my blood angels. I've done this on my Tau. I think I did, yeah. It's really, it's a really cool, easy, and effective way to show battle damage. You don't have to do it in all of the brown splotches, but you definitely want to do it in most. All right, there you have it, a finished Talarn Desert Raider. Now, if you wanna go any higher with the highlights on, say, the uniform, you could use Rackarth Flesh, and let me just show you what it looks like if you do that. You would only use Rackarth Flesh on the highlighted areas, so anything that the light would naturally catch, you don't want to, you don't wanna use it um, across the entire flat areas but you will use it to make lines, to catch the edges, just to show where the, the cloth folds. You wanna accentuate the folds. And that's why we put um, Pallid Witch Flesh as the highlight color for the head wrap, because you want the head wrap to be lighter and whiter. Whereas the straight rack art flesh for the uniform is used more as a accent color. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, and then if you want, you can feather the bottom. It creates a really cool effect where it looks like the highlights are really jagged down here at the bottom. Yep, like I said, it's only an accent color, so you don't want to overdo it. But it does, it does add a cool layer of depth to your uniform. It makes your guy look more, more detailed. So this is your Talarn Desert Raider. Another step you might want to do, which I'll show you right now, is the very last step I'm going to do, is adding some hobby arid static grass onto your guy. So what I do is I get a little bit of white PVA all-purpose all glue and I will dab it onto the base. Oh, I haven't used this in a while. Sometimes if you don't use your glue in a while, it, it's uh, kind of finicky. You guys know what I'm talking about. Okay. Go in and do this with like a body knife. We'll do it live. We'll do it live, Bill O'Reilly. We'll do it live. I'm gonna use my hobby knife. Find places where I want the static grass to go. I remember looking at this in the, the hobby store and thinking like, dead grass? Why would anyone want dead grass on their models? Doesn't make any sense. And then I realized, yeah, a desert is not all sand. You're gonna have some patches of dried vegetation and stuff. So I think it's cool. I think it's a cool little thing to add. Okay, if I had tweezers, I would totally use tweezers, but nothing is where it should be today. So I'm gonna use my hobby knife again. And I'm gonna take my guy off of the little 
round cork. And let's get it a little bit more in focus here. So, put my guy right over the static grass. Some of you out there might have a better way of doing this or might have suggestions on better ways of doing this. If you are still watching this video, please do tell me. Oh, it's like, hey. It's like, hey, hey, Arnold. What? Just putting it on my guy. I really should be using tweezers. Note to self, buy tweezers. Because this is... This is redonks, you guys. I shouldn't even be touching my guy because I haven't sealed it yet. Note to self, don't ever touch your model before sealing it. I don't know why I tell myself all these notes. I never, never take them. That's why Mini Wargaming won't make me a tutorial producer. I'm just kidding. I love you Mini Wargaming, Dave. Please choose me. Alright. Where gobbledygook. Tappy, 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 tappy. Tappy, 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 tappy. Get the excess off. Oh, in order to... I don't, I don't know if I showed you how to paint the sand, but what I did was I used Mornfang Brown, and then I dry brushed it with just a lightning ser uh, a lightening series of browns. So Mornfang Brown, then I believe Steel Legion Drab, Rackhearth Flesh, and then uh, Screaming Skull. So after you let this dry for just a little while, once the static grass is dry, you just blow on it a bit. <sighs> and that makes it stand up at all the different angles. And there you go, Talarn Desert Raider. So thanks for watching everybody. For those of you um, besides Warhammer Fat Kids who is planning on doing Talarn Desert Raiders, this is how I would do them. Another alternative thing to do would be to add a pattern, pattern to the headscarf, or to even paint it a different color entirely, like red with a, a white pattern. That would be pretty cool. I might do a video on how I would do that, but this is the standard way I would paint Talar and Desert Raiders. Uh, if, you, if you back up here and take a look at them, you'll see that the blue pops, the grass pops. There's a lot of nice things going on here. The color combination is very, <clears throat> the color choice is very um, unified. Small range of colors. The only thing that pops out really is the blue plasma coils, the white head scarf, the green pants, <coughs> Everything is really unified. So that's how I would paint it. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed this little tutorial. We'll see you in the next one. Later.